when I called you all here this morning, I'm going to start this sale. <laughs> is nice. Mm. Just imagine if Arthur Lowe was here this morning. With all this. Where's the food? The wine. Had that much ago. Anyways, welcome to you all here today. Uh, it's, it's a marvellous turnout, and let me say that it's, it is because of the organisation that's happened before this day that uh, has brought about what I hope will be a very happy day for everybody here. It's quite amazing what uh, Jack and Paul Carpenter and Tony Pritchard and uh, Nick Randall and David, of course, and Stephen have done to bring about this event. It is absolutely remarkable the work they put in. Um, and thanks to everybody who to them for this. Um, all the details of what is going to go on, well, you'll find that out during <coughs> the I just want to say, well, I, I know that uh, so far, we're still waiting for Clive. Um, he left about four o'clock this morning. Shepherd's Bush. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he should be here fairly shortly. Um, but uh, the Alambda's here, Michael Knowles, Harold Snow. David Croft is here, um, Colin Bean has come all the way down this morning, so it's marvellous to see Colin here, Hugh Hastings and um, Hugh Cecil, um, they, they, we've pretty well got a, a full house of uh, representatives of, of, the, uh, of the show and uh, they'll all be pleased to meet you and I'm sure you'll be pleased to meet them. So that's all I've got to say uh, and Jack Weaver certainly has got a few things to say about the, uh, the auction and one or two other things. Uh, I think, but uh, David will give you the details of that now. Thanks very much, and you know, just have a, a good time. There are going to be two lots of uh, food things over here, so you needn't all rush. Um, apparently, we're only supposed to have a certain amount of people. We're about uh, 20 over the odds here, but nobody's listening, I don't think, at the moment. And if we don't really care today, we don't care if another hundred come in. You know, who cares? Um, they said, oh, no, 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 far because, no, it's not far because. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I said that in front of Napoleon, you wouldn't have to go in. Get our pockets, get our pockets, months, I'm doing it for you here, I do. David, there we are. Thanks so much. Ladies and gentlemen, a really big warm welcome. Step forward, please, Mr. Jimmy Perry and Mr. David Croft. Society and all the members, they both accept this, the uh, special anniversary plate and the latest edition of the Dad's Army Handbook. <laughs> the idea. Next hour I just settled up. I got the idea, and I'm not going to go through all this again because you've all heard it. This is a boy of 15. I actually served in the Hogan. And now I'm getting so old that I talk to people about the war and they invariably say, what war? <laughs> so I don't talk about it very much. Do you want to add a few words there? I don't think I did, really. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, uh, what was that? It was all the fighting fighters, actually. And uh, it was uh, a very funny script. I tried to away to the the world. And we uh, all the story. And then we'll write it. But, um, that's how it all happened. And, uh, I'd like to pay, if I may, David, a tribute, first of all, to a couple of people. One's dead and the other's alive here today. The man that's no longer with us is a man named Michael Mills, Lieutenant, ex Lieutenant Commander in the Navy. It seemed in those days all the high ranking um, members of the BBC staff were either old colonels or old generals or the captains of the Navy. Well, Michael Mills was head of comedy at that time, which was 1967, and he had enormous enthusiasm, enthusiasm, and he was the one who thought up the title Dad's Army. I'd also like to pay tribute to somebody who's very much alive, 
And that's Harold Snow. Please stand up. Stand up Harold. Harold, please stand up. Right. That's Harold Snow. <laughs> Harold was in the very first Dad's Army and had the bravery to say, after second series, to come back into the rehearsal room and say, now look, I've just been to see the edited version of the show, and let's face it, none of you know your lines. <laughs> now, a man who could do that to the Dad's Army team has got to have very big balls. <laughs> Panel was also responsible for finding location. Uh, it being a, the uh, dance army is supposed to be a sort of a, a spring or a summary story, and so uh, we were doing it. I think on the, our first day of film was the first of April, so we decided that we had to find a place with a lot of conifers, and so we found this, uh, this location on near the battle area in Thetford. Um, and on that first day, um, it started to snow. I said, "Don't worry, it looked like apple blossom." <laughs> Carry on. And when we saw the results, it didn't. <laughs> I tell you, David, as somebody I'd like to pay tribute, that's Eric Longworth. Where is he? Ah, Eric. Always, oh, you never change. Eric played the town clerk and originated that wonderful saying, fleshings. <laughs> Thank you very much. But of course, without your writing in the first place, that, none of this would have happened. Now, we watch an episode, and as I said, it's got both of your names at the end of it, and yet the, the episode seems so seamless. How, how did you divide the writing up between you? You tell them. We didn't. Yeah, we did quite We were to get together um, on Monday and sort of talk about uh, the series, the uh, episode. And um, we used to sort out pretty, uh, the best part of the couple of the for about three days. And then Jimmy went away and wrote one, and I went away and wrote one. So um, when it comes to Dan's Armour, they've all written separately by each of us. Um, and Jimmy wrote half of them, and I wrote half of them. Yes, that's right. And somebody else we've got to pay tribute to, that's Colin Bean, Private Sponge. You there, Colin. Wait, just don't bother to get up. I am up! <laughs> we're still waiting for Clive Dunnett. Clive is here. Clive is here. Clive is here. It's on the overdrive. gentleman never changes. I've known him for 31 and a half years and he always looks the same. It's amazing. Would you like to say a few words to the people, Clive? My lords, ah oh, there you are. <laughs> My lords, ladies and gentlemen, it's not only a great pleasure to come here this morning, it's also highly inconvenient. <laughs> Can you hear me at the back? Yes. Can you hear me at the back? Yes. yes! Never mind, comrades, come the revolution, you'll be down the front. <laughs> yeah, to be serious for a second, it's so lovely to see these old gentlemen, uh, these two nice chaps. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the what? Yes. Uh, let me have a look at you all. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming along. It's, it's a great honour to see you all, and thank you for your support. I shall always wear it and think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, can I say to you, we all had a lovely time. We're going to be this time. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, dear old John Lemezra is probably listening to us all, sitting on a cloud, having a gin and tonic, <laughs> and listening to us all this morning. I had a bit of fun once doing one, one New Year's Eve. We were on, in Trafalgar Square, millions of people all shouting and things. And he went up to the policeman and said, Excuse me, Constable, this is true. Please, excuse me, Constable, he said, 
could you tell me where I could find Alcoholics Anonymous? <laughs> and the policeman said, why? I said, do you want to join? He said, yeah, I want to resign. <laughs> <laughs> And you know the famous, now famous story about Arthur Lowe, who, when we were on location um, up in near Thetford, um, Arthur said, I had this funny old butcher's down, you know, got a gate change, very difficult. And he said, I'd like to try and drive that a bit, if you don't mind. We've got a half an hour here. So I said, it's got a difficult. He said, oh, we have to ride back. So anyway, we drove off, went near a farm, and he managed to run, up, run over a cockerel. <laughs> So, being a perfect gentleman, he picked the cockerel up and knocked on the farmer's door and said, I'm sorry, my man, I'd like to replace your cockerel. And the farmer said, please yourself, the hens around the back. <laughs> <laughs> None of this is true, of course. That's a bit of fun early in the morning, isn't it? I've been trying to get him about six, I couldn't find it. It's difficult to find. Has he got smaller, yes? Has he got smaller? Now, uh, where were we? Shall I go on? Yeah. Yeah. What about those powders they gave you in the ball? Oh, my God, yes. What about the milk? He wants to know what happened. What, what did you the say? The powders they gave you in the poor war. Oh, the powders they gave you in the poor war. Take your mind off women. Yes, I think they're just beginning to work. <laughs> Somebody to ask me. Where did you get the medal? What medal? <laughs> My medal. Oh, My the medal. Oh, yes. Yes, I got that for bravery. What did you do? I saved the whole regiment from being killed. Where did you get that other one? Wait a minute, I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> How did you do that? I shot the cook. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get the other medal from? Oh, this is a difficult one. Where did you get that medal? You got it on the front here. Oh, yes, I got it on the front. You got another on the back here. That <laughs> better memory than I have. <laughs> is Bill here this morning? Yes. yes. Has he sold any books yet? <laughs> oh, there you are, man. <laughs> I've, I've just had I've just had a, a deputation from Age Concern. <laughs> and they say they don't want to know about this lot up here, they think they're rather past us. <laughs> it's lovely to see you. I've been waiting for you, you know, because you left at four o'clock this morning, I think. I did, yes. What have you got a five pound note there? What's that? Hasn't it gone quiet since you've been on? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think you know, he's not a bad chap, is he? But I want to see, how do you become a member of the Bill Perchby uh, Association? Huh? You have to pay a lot. I thought it was Bill Perchby Appreciation Society. Anyway, that's another society, much cheaper. I've got one nice little, are there any Irish gentlemen in the audience? No, that's strange. I've got a nice little Irish gentleman, I must tell you, and I promised to go. Andrew Murphy was put in charge of the uh, uh, Arctic expedition and they said to him, uh, we want to hear from you every six hours to make sure you're okay. So he said, fine, okay. Off he went, didn't hear a word from him for five days and suddenly the radio telephone goes, Andrew Murphy here, Andrew Murphy. He said, my God, we've been so frightened. What's, what's happened? He said, not at all. Well, the expedition's going really badly. We've lost six of the Huskies. He said, the main sledge is split down the middle and the expedition doctor He's fallen down a crevice and we can't get him out. They said, oh God, that's terrible. He said, but things are bound to improve once we get out of Dublin. Kay <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Beck, dear Jimmy Beck. Uh, Kay, where are you, darling? She was over here, but she's not here. <laughs> I'm going to get you to make all these important announcements. I'm just going to say goodbye now. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye, and I hope we all meet again under happier circumstances. <laughs> Famous warm-up man, 
and also appeared in several episodes of Dad's Army. Ain't our pop, Mum. Heidi, hi. You rang, my lord. Are you being served? Oh, Dr. Beachy, have I left any out? Yes. Felix Barnes, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Don't let him up. Don't let him up. Don't let him up. A bit late for the sodding war. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to dispel this rumour that I'm, 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 I'm gay. I'm not gay. I'm not even sodding happy. Anyway, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm here and I'd like you all to know that Deirdre is free. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> anyway, I'm. Uh, I would just tell you one joke because uh, he did a good turn, that old man. Was up here at the <laughs> he did, he, he was quite good for that old man. You do look well, David. And you do, Jimmy. Start the others. And uh, I, I, I want to say that I, I am free for uh, any uh, warm ups that may be going. I've done a lot of them and it's a bit late now to start, but there's a baby crying in Chalet at uh, 19. Um, I, I always remember on filming, because that was the only time they got me out on Dad's Army on filming. One of the cameramen, uh, he was there, and, uh, and the, the, the super bar was there, and they, they all there, and he said, uh, he said, I can't go on. He said, I can't do this anymore, this film. And he said, I've got something, I've got awful headaches. His friend said, You don't. He said, I do. He said, I do. And then he finished that line there. He said, I do, I, I do get terrible headaches. He said, Well, what you want to do is the same as I do. He said, When I get headaches, he said, I go home. I lift the wife's brows, I go, my and it goes. He said, George, he said, no, he said, I'll go home, a true, I, I lift her brows, I go, my and it goes. But three or four days later, he was back on the set, and, 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 he, and he said, here, how's your headache? Oh, he said, that's a marvellous cure you gave me, and haven't you got a lovely home? <laughs> I'm doing a bit of creeping and I've done a lot of good is done there. <laughs> uh, I did mention just now in here that the friend of Carling was here and that lovely episode that we did, all is safely gathered in. I think that was one of the, the happiest two or three days we had doing that. It's lovely to see you here, friend. Glad you've come. I'm going to hand you back now to the two men who are responsible for the fact that we're all here today and uh, who, who knows? The, the millennium, the year 2000. We'll have another one somewhere, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere where I can't get there. <laughs> I have all the worry. <laughs> there you are, David. I'll hand back to you now. Thanks very much, David and Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I just want to know how on earth you, you ration the jokes among people like that. It's just so funny. Well, we never do jokes. We never do jokes! <laughs> uh, no, David and I don't do jokes. Do, do no, we? we do funny quips and wheezes and character stuff. But no, it was very difficult. And I have to pay a tribute to him, which I don't normally do, because I only talk about myself. But I'd like to pay tribute to the Dance Army team, because we never... I think I'm right, aren't I, Clive? We never had any jealousy amongst any of them. And this is true. You should go out of there, but never mind. Right? Well, we'll be a chance to speak later. I'm not sure I'll have a short break now. We'll speak to you later. Thanks very much. Thank you.